Mary? I am being wrongly taken into custody. Under whose orders? Mine, Terrence Myers. Look, this woman is publishing leaks from Robert Borden's campaign on the eve of a federal election. As is my right. Right? As a journalist. Can you imagine? A hole blown in the fabric of society. It's called freedom of the press. This woman needs to be thrown behind bars until she names the source of these leaks. It's a matter of national, national security. Yes. But unless you can point to a specific law that Miss Cherry is in violation of, I'm afraid I can't simply hold her in our cells. Miss Cherry, you are free to go. Thank you, Detective. But what's to protect me next time some Mandarin of the state oversteps his authority? As far as you're concerned, I can't guarantee that won't happen. Then lock me up, Detective. Let's see how much stomach this government has once this issue is before the courts. What's all this then? A mother's meeting? Sir, I'm attempting to release Miss Cherry, but both she and Agent Myers seem intent that I lock her up. Agent Myers? Thought you were a politician. Who are you? It's classified information. Myers, it's always a pleasure, but we don't have time for this. Headed somewhere, sir? We both are. The Honorable Robert Borden has just arrived in Toronto, and we're looking after him. The man might be this country's next prime minister. So, Miss Cherry, please, run along. We've got bigger fish to fry. Murdoch, grab your hat. You're with me. Detective Murdoch, Toronto. Detectives, Staff. over here. Thank you for responding to my call so quickly. I beg your pardon? To which call are you referring? Kitchen boy found him. Wallet's empty. This camera has been smashed and there's no film inside. Perhaps there was a struggle for it. Do you know this man? I did. Arthur Wilson. He worked for Robert Borden. Well, he's no longer on the payroll. Based on Algor Mortis, I'd estimate the victim died sometime between 9 p.m. and midnight. The cause appears to be a penetrating gunshot wound to the chest. Death would have been quick. Right. Thank you, Ms. Horn. I also noticed one other thing. That there's a key around his neck. Hmm. He was keeping it hidden. A tiny key for a tiny lock and a tiny door. A bird cage. Or luggage. Uh, pardon me, where might we find the uh, board and people here? Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Toronto Constabulary? Is Mr. Borden about? I'm sorry, Mr. Borden cannot be disturbed, but I assure you I, I speak on his behalf. And you are? William Price, Mr. Borden's political secretary. Very good. What position did Mr. Wilson uh, fill on the campaign? Uh, he was uh, in charge of logistics and security. He traveled ahead of the campaign. Oh, is that why he carried a camera? Oh, yes, yes. He photographed venues and accommodations. What sort of a man was he? Hard to say. He uh, kept to himself. Did he have any enemies? Not that I'm aware of. In truth, I knew very little about the man. When did you see him last? Two days ago, when he quit. He quit? For what reason? He wasn't committed to Mr. Borden, which I could not understand. He is the best man, the only man for the job. I do hope Mr. Borden has your votes. <clears throat> uh, where were you last night, between 9 and midnight? In my room, preparing the minister's speech. Alone? Yes. Will that be all? Mr. Borden's rally is tonight, and there's a great deal left to accomplish. Of course. Thank you for your time. Remember, Borden is your man. The man's as oily as tin fish, but I don't see any motive for murder. Nor do I. Yeah, sir. What have you, George? Well, I couldn't find anybody who heard a gunshot, but the hotel manager gave me this. Our victim's last known address. Anything interesting at the desk? Sir, there's this handbill from an agricultural rally just two days ago. Suitcase with some spare shirts. 
this briefcase. Oh, it's getting to open. It's locked. The key. Doesn't fit. Maybe there's another case. Right. Hmm. What's this? A hidden compartment. These are internal documents from the Robert Borden campaign, sir. Private letters and telegrams. Not the sort of stuff that an advanced man would normally carry around. Sir, these are similar in content to the documents that Miss Cherry has been printing in her paper. Mr. Wilson was the source of the leaks. Leo. She looks to be about 32. If you could write down. Uh, Ju oh, uh, Julia, please come quickly. What's happened? A woman was brought in unconscious by her landlady. Hello, I'm Dr. Julia Ogden. What's your tenant's name? Oh, she never said. I don't think she speaks English. Has she been ill long? Well, not that I know of. <sighs> Laboured breathing, and her eyes are cloudy. Is she sensitive to pollen? Well, how should I know? What's this? There are signs of erythema on her forearm. That's not my doing. I found her like that. Oh, dear God. Her fingers have been amputated. Mr. Price, could we have a word? Sorry, Inspector, you caught me at a bad time. We thought you might like to see what we've found. Private campaign documents that were hidden by your former logistics man. Yes, I see. You knew he was tipping off the press? He confessed to me personally. He confessed? Yes, he said he'd experienced a change of heart. He'd been put up to it by a political rival, but the more time he spent with Mr. Borden, the more he came to regard him as a kind and thoughtful patriot. And yet he quit his post anyway? No, if you want the truth, I fired him. Well, in my experience, trust between men is like a fine wine. Years to develop, no time at all to spoil. What about our trust in you, Mr. Price? I'm a political secretary, Inspector. My job requires skillful management of facts in the service of the greater good. That's just a fancy way of saying you're a liar. Excuse me a moment. Excuse me, miss. May I ask you a question? Well, that depends. <laughs> I'm Detective William Murdoch of the Toronto Constabulary. And I assume you are the telephone switchboard operator? You're a clever detective. How'd you know? Oh, uh, the size of the room that you exited, its proximity to the front desk, coupled with the fact that you were only wearing one earring. <laughs> it, it gets in the way of the earpiece. Yes. Um, did you happen to receive any strange phone calls last night? I assure you, Inspector, after Mr. Wilson was fired, I never saw or heard from him again. Now, if there's nothing else, I must get back to work. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Detective Murdoch, chatting up young ladies in hotel lobbies. And that young lady is the hotel switchboard operator. It would appear our victim telephoned the hotel here last night at 8 p.m., desperate to speak to one of the guests. Let me guess. It's our political secretary. I wouldn't trust that man as far as I could throw a feather. No, the call was to someone else. Our victim asked to speak with his former boss, the Honorable Robert Laird Borden. Please, sir, have a seat. A nasty business. I didn't know Mr. Wilson well, but he seemed a decent fellow. Even though he was leaking your business to the newspapers? Even though. He confessed to that, and I'd forgiven him. Besides, what am I to hide? An affinity for keeping Canada Canadian, guilty as charged. Sir, if I may, 
But Mr. Wilson telephoned you the night he was killed. What did he say? Only that he had discovered a pressing matter of vital importance. And would I be able to meet with him straight away? Meaning last night? Yes. He said he was making his way directly and would call on me at the hotel when he arrived. And then what happened? Then nothing. He never appeared. And we awoke to learn the reason why. How would you describe Mr. Wilson's state of mind during the call? I'm not sure. He, he seemed troubled. Did he sound scared? Yes, somewhat. Can you imagine why that could be? Or what he wanted to tell you? I'm sorry, I confess I cannot. Mr. Wilson and I had barely spoken prior to that evening. I never saw him that night, and I suppose I never will again. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Mr. Borden must prepare his speech. Well, sir, it was an honor to make your acquaintance. Thank you for your time. Truly, the honor was mine. A welcome respite from the campaign trail. Good day, gentlemen. There you are, Murdoch. A man of character. We can hardly say we know the man. But he does not strike me as a vengeful sort. We'll have to find another rabbit for this particular hunt. Excuse me, sirs. Miss Cherry has published a new edition. Thank you. How can she continue to publish leaked documents if her source is dead? Well, let's ask her. Why am I here? Miss Cherry, we need to know how you obtained your latest exclusive. And we've already been through this. I will not divulge my sources. We know who the source is. And we've recently found him dead. Good Lord. What was his name? <laughs> Don't think you can play us for fools, young lady. No, truly, I never met him. And yet you were willing to go to jail to protect the identity of someone whose identity you were never actually privy to. Of course. It's the principle of it. Information is power, gentlemen. Just look at what happened to poor Mr. Miss Cherry, I ask you again. When did you obtain this latest leak? Just this morning. How can that be, if your source is dead? Don't ask me. I received a leak almost every day. Today was no different. Someone else must be involved. Maybe that someone is our killer. Miss Cherry, we need your help. We need to find out who else may be connected to these leaks. And what's in it for me? You'll get to report on the truth. That is, if the truth still matters to you. It all started with an anonymous letter. The source told me he would sell me information on the Borden campaign. I was skeptical at first, but I followed his instructions and was soon rewarded. Every morning, I'd check to see if a mark was set on the lamppost outside Scott's diner. If the mark was there, I'd go inside and find documents on the Borden campaign under my usual seat. I'd swap the documents for money, and then leave, wiping the mark off the lamppost as I went. How long did it take for the money to disappear? I'm not sure but it was always gone by evening. I checked myself. Right. Let's see if today's payment's been collected. What do you want? Buckingham Palace, but then none of us are princesses, are we? It smells a little bit like mold. Which is why I was airing the place out. Well, I don't mean to offend. I'm just trying to establish the cause of your tenant's illness. But like I said, it's nothing to do with me. I keep things proper. Do you know where she might have worked? I can't imagine she did work. The woman, she really left the room. 
This trunk came from Trieste. Same as the woman, I suppose. No, yeah, she hardly spoke a word of English. I haven't had time to tidy up yet. Oh, dear God. What is it? The woman's missing fingers. Terence Myers. What is the meaning of this? All will be revealed, but not just yet. And never to you. What? Why? Because you are a firebrand and a rabble rouser. I'll speak to Detective Murdoch alone. Come on, Miss Cherry. What? We're leaving. Would have thought better of you, George. The public have the right to know what deeds are being perpetrated in their name. There's only so much the public can be trusted to know, am I right? Have a seat, Murdoch. You must try this new dish from Calgary. Ginger beef, to standing. So, what I'm about to tell you can never leave this restaurant. I knew who the source of the leak was, of course. He worked for me until he, well, he went soft. It went soft? Yeah. He abandoned Laurier in order to side with Borden. What a joke that was. Borden has the charisma of a butter knife. So if he was doing all this at your behest, then why go through all the song and dance to have Miss Cherry reveal her source? A standard cutout test. Stress the loyalty of someone in a double blind setup and see how they perform. Miss Cherry just passed with flying colors. She's a fiery pistol, that one. Admire very like Heart blocks to another. Right. So you're responsible for all of the Borden leaks. Why? The leaks were designed to knock Borden down in the polls. A man is a monarchist who will work towards dismantling everything that Laurier has tried to accomplish in making Canada an independent voice on the world stage. And Laurier is aware of what you're doing? The Prime Minister is involved with a federal election as well as trying to launch the Canadian Navy. He doesn't get down on the dirt with men like us. I see. So, sorry my man is dead. But I didn't kill him. Even though the last time we met ended in a disagreement. On account of Mr. Wilson going soft. The man lost his way. He was talking nonsense about some threat he had heard against Borden at a at an agricultural rally. The last time I saw him, he was getting on a streetcar with that ridiculous camera of his, a terrible spy craft. Any idea where he was going? Headed towards the ward. That's all I know or all you're prepared to say. Any change? Well, she's resting more peacefully, but she hasn't awoken yet. Oh, what did you find? The woman's missing fingers. <gasps> Mercy, what happened to them? It appears to be extreme frostbite. Oh. It would have caused her enormous discomfort, perhaps to the point of self-amputation. I have heard tales of Arctic explorers doing the exact same thing. Well, <laughs> Toronto may be chilly, but this is not the high Arctic. Thank you, Mrs. Winter. Sir. What have you, George? Uh, a place to look, I believe. Lead the way. Sir, as far as keeping secrets from the public, do you side with Miss Cherry or Agent Myers? Well, I suppose there are things the government would prefer to keep secret. But the government works for the people, not the other way around. Should Miss Cherry not have the right to publish the information she's found? Not if it was illegally obtained. Yeah, but then it's the government that decides what is legal or illegal. Seems to me they're making up all the rules. Yes, but they are all of us. Doesn't seem that way sometimes. No, it doesn't. Uh, in any case, sir, this is the spot. A washerwoman saw our man take a photograph down this alley about 8 p.m. last night. What is it, sir? George, where is the nearest telephone call box? Uh, this way. Mr. Wilson telephoned the hotel the night he was killed, and he sounded afraid. Perhaps the subject of his photograph spotted him and gave chase. Mr. Wilson's camera was without film. Mm. 
What is it, sir? Our victim's missing film. Sometimes you get lucky, George. Do you have it? Yo, it's not Halloween. They guy fox masks. They hold it. If I'm not mistaken, that is a bomb. And it's intended for Robert Borden. Way, man. It shouldn't take too long. Mr. Borden is waiting in the hallway. Good man. Take him straight out. Crabtree here will provide escort for you both. Is this disruption really necessary? If you think this is bad, imagine what it'll be like if a bomb goes off. We need access to the hotel's ballroom. That's already been secured. Not by us. How long will this take? As long as it takes to guarantee the safety of this nation. Good. Toronto Women's Clinic. How are you feeling? Has she spoken? Not yet. You were found unconscious in your room? Do you remember what happened? Uh, yes. Two of your fingers have been amputated. Did you do that to yourself? Orgirkosh. Uh, Orgirkosh. Believe they need this many chairs. You sure it's Borden we're talking about here? Sounds as though you're worried he might win. Hardly. Serve my country, not the man leading it. Shouldn't we check under the stage? I don't think so. Take another look at the photograph. Oh, the clamp. Hmm. Huh. I've never seen one of these attached to a bomb before. What do you think it's for? For attaching to a pipe. We found it. Oh. Yank out the detonator, we'll be done. It looks somewhat sophisticated. It could be too risky. We should disconnect the timing device first. Well, you're as timid as a sparrow in a snowstorm, aren't you? I've done this before, you know. What? Accidentally detonate a bomb? Fine. Have it your way, please. Get no points for style. Power from the left to the right. Double back. Yes. Go. Oh. Nicely done. to arrest the man that put it here. You found the bomb, bravo. Yes, we did, mercifully. You told us that the ballroom had been secured. Meaning, in the moment, of course, people had been in and out. Yes. I noticed you wear your watch chain quite high. Higher than most. It's the uniform. It also happens to match the location of the watch on the man in this photograph. I also noticed that you have chalk on your sleeve. Did you happen to come in contact with a particular lighting pipe inside the ballroom? 
Oh. I believe this is also yours. You on your way to a costume party, or...? You're coming with us, sunshine. Kill him? Come now. You've seen the bomb you found where I put it. The most that thing would have done is spoil his speech and rain down some plaster. For what reason? Have you heard what Borden plans to do to Canadian agronomy? American terrorists will kill family farms and force us all to move to Toronto to work as ruddy hotel clerks. Did you attend this agricultural rally? Yes, sir, I did, along with many fine people. And did you encounter Mr. Wilson there? No, I only knew him from the hotel. But he saw you, and he followed you, and took this photograph. Why the masks? It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Remember, remember the 5th of November and all that? Mr. Wilson learned of your plan and was going to spoil your fun, so you killed him? I had nothing to do with the murder. Where were you last night between the hours of 9 p.m. and midnight? I was having a few beers down at the bowl with some friends. So who is this friend? She never told me your name. I met her at the rally. She said she could assist me with the bomb. Well, gentlemen, this job has ridden me roughshod across a broad swale of human experience. I've rocketed to the edge of space and been plunged down to the depths of human betrayal, each moment soaking themselves into the very canvas of my soul. And because of that, I can honestly say, I've never been on a mission to small potatoes as this one. <laughs> to small potatoes. To small potatoes. Gentlemen, this is far from over. A man is dead and his killer is still at large. Would you like me to question Mr. Blake further? There are ways of making people talk. Good evening, gentlemen. Julia. Uh, William, I'm heading home. Yes, I'll join you. Terence Myers. Doctor. Those Guy Fawkes costumes? I know this building. You do? That's the ward. Yes, I have a new patient that lives there. Unusual case, actually. She may have severed her own fingers. <laughs> Why would she do that? I don't know. She doesn't speak English. I believe she's from Trieste. Trieste? What is it? We've heard rumors of a bomb expert traveling from Trieste, but we all thought they were headed to America. Who is this woman? I don't know. The only thing that she said is... Orgiakosh or Orgikosh? We must question this woman at once. Orgiakosh is Hungarian and it means assassin. I'll see if I can wake her. Oh, dear God. Damn, we're too late. The assassins found her and finished the job. It is what I feared. What are you talking about? Doctor, your patient is from Trieste, a vital deep water port for the Austro-Hungarian Empire, an empire that's intent on growing its naval power at the expense of the British. You're telling us this is about the bloody navy? The world is engaged in a titanic struggle, Inspector, a battle to control the high seas and the rise of the dreadnought. What does this have to do with Canada? Laurier wants to create a homegrown navy, while Borden would send money directly to England for the purpose. And the Austro-Hungarians don't want that. While they have no fear of a Canadian navy, a strong British fleet is a threat. Precisely. And now that their munitions expert is dead, the Huns are going to pivot. Pivot to what? Something much more direct. There's clearly a highly trained foreign assassin loose in this city, and I predict that unless we act quickly, Robert Borden will be killed tonight. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening. The people of Toronto share the concerns of all Canadians in this Excuse upcoming me. federal election. Excuse me, and sir. I'm afraid we have to terminate the event. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid the event has to be terminated. Please make your way to the exits.
What's happening? Nothing that should appear in the papers. How about a little quid pro quo? If you know something, Miss Cherry. I saw someone hurry through that door a moment ago. It looks suspicious. You owe me. would be you, Taz. It has always been you. And I'm sorry. This also has to be you. The international assassin is your wife? It's incredible, isn't it? You little minx. The last time we met, you were named... Deborah Anderson. And you were nosy and sent away. Some things change, some things stay the same. I thought you were in prison. Did they swap you for McCutcheon? He didn't survive the torture. They traded me for Hopkins. Hopkins? You're worth 10 of Hopkins. Thank you. It was true. <clears throat> You wanted to kill Borden, so you recruited the hotel manager to do it under false pretenses. Find a gullible local patsy, then kill them when it's done, so you cover your tracks. Brilliant. You also killed Borden's logistics man. You saw me with the hotel manager, had to die. And you killed your bomb maker from Trieste? Mm, all the frayed ends that had to be tidied. And what was tonight's plan? Tonight's mission was straightforward. The best ones always are. I planned to shoot Borden when he left the stage, but killing him in a crowd would make my escape unlikely. This time, I would surely have. So, I went out on the roof to take in my last breath of freedom, to look out over the city, it's German. But it wasn't meant to be. I was thwarted once again by Canada's most brilliant spy and his wide eyed provincial sidekick. Excuse me? Bravo, Barons. Bravo. I'm prepared to meet my fate. I'd like my wife to be caught out so easily. And why not? We acted with swift precision and were rewarded. I mean, how many of us have not lost a step or two over the years? Mind your words, sir, that woman could run circles around any of us. Detective Murdoch, it's Miss Hart. Just a moment, Miss Hart. I am placing our call on my inter-office communication device. Uh, Please go ahead. While the wound on her neck was indeed the cause of death. You found something else. The internal examination revealed her lungs were damaged by delayed onset edema. An accumulation of fluids. Yes. A spectroscopic analysis shows the victim inhaled a near fatal dose of phosgene gas. Good Lord. Although she was murdered, she likely wouldn't have survived another day. Well, what happened to her? Gentlemen, we have been hearing chatter about the Austrians experimenting with gas warfare. 
We had no idea they progressed so far. Our victim must have been working with liquid phosgene. It must have released in her room, frozen her fingers, and destroyed her lungs. Ugh. Gentlemen, if I'm not mistaken, this bomb wasn't merely meant to explode. It would have also released phosgene gas. But we foiled Laura's plan. Yes, but we arrested her on the roof, right next to all of the ventilation equipment. Laura Solne wasn't up there taking in the view before her arrest. She was planting a bomb. It'll gas the whole hotel. We need to find it quickly. Where are I? I'll let you handle that one. Thank you. lady before we toast our success please indulge me remember remember the 5th of november this bomb scare shall all be forgot but i see no reason why elections and treason should come down to bloody dreadnoughts <laughs> <laughs> seeing as my board and leaks have dried up there is still the issue of the outstanding story i'm out well don't keep us in suspense i can see it now Deadly gas leak threatens prime minister candidate. Uh, I'm sorry, you cannot say that. Austrian spy stopped in Toronto Sky. I must insist not. It's a matter of national, national security. security. Yes. So what am I allowed to say? been celebrating. A little bit? Yep. Shut. How did you figure it out? It's my usual combination of insight, instinct, broad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> you know, I used to wonder if all Canadians were like you. But now I know. You be star, Molly. Dein Schönheit. Is Einzigartig. The charm was always so rakish. <laughs> you find the rakish. Mm. In the next month, it's not just the federal election. <gasps> Lively. Our anniversary. You remembered. Just 20 glorious years. Lipstick. Damn, you're good. Hmm. I've built up quite a tolerance over the years. Goodbye, my love. Be the same. Gentlemen, I feel a fool. 
for still chasing after a woman who only married you so she could spy on the Canadian government. Thus allowing an international assassin to escape. Laugh all you want. I will catch him. Little. Ah, uh, gentlemen, please don't stop the fun on my account. I would not be my mother's son if I did not make a special stop to thank you personally for saving myself and everyone at the hotel last night. Well, that was thanks to Agent Myers over there and our very own Detective William Murdoch. No commendations, no parade. That's right. It was our pleasure to be of service. I appreciate your expertise and fearlessness in the face of danger. And I look forward to serving you as your next Prime Minister. Well, sir, you have my vote. He does seem a truly decent fellow. Yeah, maybe so. But Laurier has been top dog for 15 years, and as long as I'm at the wheel, it'll be Laurier for 15 more. Morning, sirs. Have you seen Miss Cherry's newspaper? Sentinel editor saves Borden's life. <laughs> a gas leak at the Queen's Hotel threatened to end Robert Borden's campaign, but disaster was averted by the quick thinking and decisive action of your editor, Miss Louise Cherry. Well, that's one way of putting it. The press is an excellent servant, but a terrible master. Oh, please, come now, Agent Myers. Even you must admit that democracy can only truly shine under the bright light of a free press. I prefer to stay in the shadows. Thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, it would appear that I have a wife to find. <laughs> <laughs>